Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Today I'm talking about the new DC comic film, Black Adam. I apologize that this review is a little bit later than probably planned, or for those of you who probably saw earlier Black Adam reviews, I saw a little bit later than most people did. Uh, but in this movie, you guys, Black Adam is a part of the DC comic universe, so it is a part of the same universe as Man of Steel and Wonder Woman and the Suicide Squad and all these DC films that are relatively better than some of their better their weaker releases that they've had over the past couple of years. But it is a part of that same universe. They basically, this is basically a part of the same universe that Justice League lives in. So in this movie, though, you guys, we're introduced right away to a character called Black Adam. He is a character that uh, dates back thousands of years ago. Uh, similar to Shazam, he was given these powers by these gods that can basically give you these lightning abilities. And uh, there's this whole backstory that the film explores about him um, getting this offer, uh, about how he, how he was raised in slavery, how he was uh, forced to kind of look for this artifact for this king that uh, treated people really badly in this country. And uh, basically, he gets this offer to basically what we all know is it's to, to, be, be, to become Black Adam. And um, basically, he becomes this character. Uh, but there's a curse that's bestowed upon him where basically he gets hidden away for thousands of years. And um, he's basically um, hidden within these tombs of this one uh, foreign country that's way, way out there. And um, it's not until somebody says the word Shazam within these tombs where he's awakened again. But uh, luck starts to come Black Adam's way when a group of artifact hunters are looking for this crown that can um, basically resurrect certain beings and um, they go on the look for it. Obviously, it's worth a lot of money. And they somehow resurrect Black Adam through the Shazam wording. And uh, basically, Black Adam awakens, but he's awakened to a world that he's not familiar with. He doesn't really understand how the modern world works. Um, he doesn't know if he's going to use his powers for good or for evil. Uh, there's certain things about the world that he really hates. There's certain things about the world that he really likes. Um, he starts to pick up on how people speak to each other. He starts to pick up on uh, people having sarcasm and people having um, just the way people live and how they go about their life and how certain people dominate over others. And so over the course of this film, uh, Black Adam is also introduced to a group of characters called the Justice Society. Uh, these are characters such as Dr. Fate and Cyclone. Adam Smasher, I think, is the other one. And um, I believe there's uh, Hawkman and a couple of other ones, too. Basically, they want to use Black Adam's abilities for good. They want to basically, uh, kind of like the Justice League, they're basically just formed by this really rich person, and uh, they want to use their abilities for good and kind of team up to do something good with their powers, and they want Black Adam to join this team. But because Black Adam is conflicted with what exactly he wants to be, uh, it's not exactly an easy yes for him. There's also this whole ordeal with this young boy being kidnapped by another person that wants this crown that they were looking for earlier in the film. And so Black Adam, over the course of this film, has to decide, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Is he really this anti-hero that legend has always spoken him to be like? Um, or is he going to be good again? Is he going to <clears throat> kind of redeem himself? And uh, similar to the gods from Shazam, is he going to... Um, become this better person, become basically what Shazam became in that Shazam movie and um, become a better person, become a good person, use his powers for good, or is he really going to fall into that villainous category of using his powers for evil? But overall, guys, I thought Black Adam was okay. Uh, there's things about this film that I really like. Um, if you're a huge Dwayne Johnson fan, I think you won't be disappointed in his performance. Um, but there's things about this film that aren't great. Um... Unfortunately, Guam Colette Sara, who directed this movie, um, I've liked a couple of his movies, but all of his movies, I would honestly say, are just kind of B-list movies. Uh, probably one of his better films that I've seen is Nonstop with Liam Neeson. Uh, he's made up a couple of other films with Liam Neeson as well, and now he seems to love working with Dwayne Johnson. Um, he's one of these directors where he t tackles good ideas, he finds good projects to work on, but some of his execution just feels very lackluster to me. There's always one of those, it's always one of those things where whenever he lands a big project like Black Adam or Jungle Cruise or uh, Run All Night, that was another big Liam Neeson film he did. Um, I always feel like there's always a better director out there that probably could have done everything that he did, but better. 
And it's just one of those unfortunate situations where he really hasn't made his Dark Knight. He hasn't made his Forrest Gump. He hasn't made his Shawshank Redemption. He's made good movies, but he hasn't made movies that are on the quality of, like, really, really great movies. So, unfortunately, Black Adam is once again going to fall into that category of just, it works, it does the job that it needs to do, but it kind of doesn't do anything more. And so let's kind of go over some positives and negatives of why the film is okay to me, while it's not amazing, while it's not terrible, while it's kind of just middle of the road. But overall, guys, so for my positives and negatives, Dwayne Johnson, like I said, is a great Black Adam in this movie. Um, I think I, I do like the idea of this anti-hero trying to figure out what he has to do to be good or what he has to do to be evil. Is there really a benefit to being evil? Is there really a benefit to being good? Um... And if you are good or are you evil, are you really going to have followers? Are you really going to have people that are always going to fight against you? So these are questions that Black Adam has to ask himself throughout this movie. Um, obviously, when we find out more about his origin, you definitely find out that there's a lot of loss in his life. Um, how he became Black Adam is, is very much a curse. Um, there's just a lot of questions that the film asks the character of Black Adam that I thought were very interesting. And to be honest, if the film was more so about Black Adam than about this Justice Society that the film does spend a lot of time with as well, I think I would have liked the film better if it was about Black Adam questioning kind of his destiny and what he wants to do with his abilities. Because I think that is some of the better parts of this movie. So overall, if you are looking for a good Dwayne Johnson performance, I think he definitely turns in another great one here. Um, I like to see him as this character of Black Adam. I don't know if I necessarily need a Black Adam too, but if he wants to play this character again in a later DC film, like let's say Man of Steel 2, or if they have plans for another Suicide Squad film where they go up against Black Adam or something like that, um, I'm totally okay with that now. Um, I really like him as this character, and I would love to see what he would do in a later DC project. Preferably not, not a Black Adam 2, but maybe something that is in that same DC universe. Uh, Pierce Brosnan is in this film. He's a, he plays a character named Dr. Fate, who's a part of the Justice Society. Very interesting character. I will say right off the bat, kind of like what a lot of other people are saying, though, he very much feels like Dr. Strange from the Marvel Universe. But there is interesting things about him. He can kind of see what people's fates are. He can see how certain people pass away. Um, he can't see his own fate, unfortunately, but he's able to see other people's fates. He's able to play around with people's minds with these magical abilities. Very interesting character. Definitely a lot of funny one-liners from Pierce Brosnan as well. You can definitely tell he had a lot of fun playing this character. So if you are interested in seeing what Pierce Brosnan does as the character of Dr. Fate, once again, I don't think you'll be disappointed. I thought his portrayal as Dr. Fate was very cool. And I like the first act of this film. I like the idea of these artifact hunters going on this journey, looking for something that's connected to Black Adam, looking for something that's connected to this arch nemesis that had this crown that Black Adam was trying to fight back in the day. Um, I like this whole artifact hunting first act. I thought that was one of the few parts of this movie where it goes in a direction that did feel a little bit more fresh than the rest of the movie did. Um, unfortunately, it does kind of get thrown in the dumpster once Black Adam becomes a part of this movie. Uh, but when we are on the artifact hunting first act... I thought that was one of the cooler parts of the film, and it really is one of the parts of the film, too, where it really shows off Black Adam's abilities once he shows up in the movie. So I like that first act of the film. Unfortunately, when we get into the second act on out, that's where a lot of the problems start to happen for me. But when we get to that artifact hunting first act, I thought that was pretty cool. There are a lot of references to uh, the Shazam and the Suicide Squad. Um, a lot of characters show up in this movie that are connected to those movies. This clearly is in the same universe as those films as well. So whenever those references happen, whenever the film does try to connect things like Shazam and Suicide Squad and Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and so forth, those references are really cool and they really help this film kind of connect to the other DC films. So those parts are pretty cool and I really liked it. The post credit scene is also a lot of fun here. Um... I won't say what it is for those who haven't seen the film yet, but it's worth it's worth sticking around when the end credits roll. Even if you ended up not liking the movie, I think the end credits scene does kind of heal the wound of whatever problems you had with the movie a little bit. Um, it definitely sets up for what could be a really cool movie later down the road if they do go down this path that the end credits scene seems to depict. Um, so if, for those who are wondering if there is an end credit scene, there is. Um, and it's definitely worth sticking around for, even if you didn't like the movie itself. Definitely worth the price of admission, for sure. 
But for my negatives of this movie, though, you guys, um, unfortunately, Black Adam is kind of a generic superhero film. It really is not a film that finds something new to do with the genre. It doesn't really do anything that wowed me in particular. Um, it's just kind of a run-of-the-mill you'll know exactly what you're going to get going in. There's definitely no surprises. I definitely saw every plot point as they went along. It's definitely not a film where I was surprised by anything that happened in the movie. So I would definitely classify Black Adam as a generic superhero film, unfortunately. And overall, the whole thing with this whole Justice Society, I really didn't feel invested in them. Yeah, it was cool to see Pierce Brosnan play this Dr. Fate character, but for the rest of them, they were just kind of these generic superheroes that just wanted Black Adam to join their team. And that's really kind of it. And I really just would have preferred a film where Black Adam was trying to figure out if he wants to be the good guy or the bad guy, or if he wants to stay in this whole anti-hero persona that people recognize him as. Um, I think I would have preferred a Black Adam film about that instead. So this whole thing about this Justice Society, it really feels shoehorned in. It really does feel like they're just trying to feel, make it feel more like a DC film by throwing these characters in there really could have just gone without them, to be honest. I mean, maybe you have Dr. Fate in there or something, but you don't need this whole group of heroes to convince Black Adam to join this team and stuff. I thought that was kind of unnecessary. So I wasn't big on it. Maybe the rest of you were, but I thought the whole thing with the Justice Society just didn't feel necessary, and it kind of added to the film's problem of feeling generic because it felt like they were trying to compete with the Avengers movies, and Black Adam is no Avenger movie, unfortunately. I also had an issue with the film is regarding if this was present day or in the future because there's technology that's introduced in supposedly what is present day that we don't have. It's just like we don't have these like jetpack flying police officers flying around all over the place and we don't have all this like random technology that this random rich guy could have that feels like something out of one of the Avenger movies. It's just like I don't know what time period this is supposed to be and there's just a lot of times where I really am kind of clashing with myself regarding if this is really present day or in the future at some point. So that part of the film was kind of frustrating to me. I also thought the villain of the film was very bland, very generic, very one-dimensional, not interesting at all. Definitely a video game character that they just threw right into the movie just so the characters of the film had a character to fight against. A uh, very bland villain, unfortunately. Didn't like that part of the movie. There's also a lot of slow-mo effects that I wasn't a big fan of. There's just a lot of scenes where... It's just like, just have normal fight scenes. I don't need all this stupid slow-mo stuff that Michael Bay loves to do. And It's just like, I'm really getting sick of all the slow-mo stuff that happens in all these action movies. I really... It's a dated effect. I think we can move on from it. So for those who are listening who are special effects artists... Please move on from this special effect. Unless you really have a specific purpose for it, for a specific film, I think we can move on from this special effect. It really is not very interesting anymore. I also would have liked to see more Shazam incorporations. Because Shazam was such a goofier film than this movie, it does kind of feel like Black Adam is a very completely different movie compared to Shazam, and I know these characters are very connected to each other. So if they are going to continue on with Shazam and Black Adam, and I know they are making a Shazam 2 at some point. Um, I think find a way to make Black Adam fit into that Shazam universe a little bit more, I think would definitely help the DC universe a lot. So personal preference, but I think they do need to work on it. And also, I just would have liked to have seen more time with the Black Adam character himself. Um, I just think I would have preferred a film where we do see Black Adam on this journey if he wants to be good or evil and not have this whole thing with the Justice Society trying to convince them to join their team or not. So I'm going to give Black Adam a 7.5 out of 10. Uh, I think it's a good Redbox rental. I don't know if I could send him to the theater to see this one, but it's okay enough for a Redbox rental. It's not offensive. It's not bad. It's just not a great superhero film, and there's times where I do feel like it is trying to compete with the Avengers films, and this film is just not an Avengers movie. It's just not in that same kind of quality as those other films are. So 7.5 out of 10, it's okay. Um... Rep box rental this one for sure, I would say.